All right, here we are. Uh, this well is controlled by a big soft starter in here. We've been here before. We had some connection issues on the main breaker, uh, but let's see what's going on. We'll just open up our two covers here. Uh, this one is just basic controls. Looks like our system fault light is lit. And then, oh, here's our soft starter display. That's a problem. F093 short circuit thyristor. That is not a good one. Okay, so let's look up that fault in the manual and then let's look closer inside here and see what's going on. Okay, so short circuit thyristor F0903 that's on the third phase. Uh, it's either a short circuit in the main circuit Thyristors are being used outside their spec, incorrect size, connections are wrong, there's bad harmonics, or this fourth thing here, the bypass is closed or welded, and it gives us a uh, test to run to test the bypass operation. It also says, uh, measure the resistance on each phase between the motor and the load side of the soft starter. If one phase is shorted, there might be a shorted thyristor or a welded contactor. See below for test. All right, so let's have a look inside. All right, so here is our soft starter enclosure cabinet. It goes main disconnect, comes through a power block, some CTs, overcurrent protection, then it comes down ahead of the overcurrent protection uh, and over to a bypass contactor and then down and to the motor. The bypass contactor has its own overload. That's if we can run the weld direct across the line. Normal operation though goes from the disconnect through the power distribution block, through the CTs, the auxiliary CTs, through the overcurrent protection, to an isolation contactor, then up and into the line side of our ABB soft starter, then out of the soft starter to our load side isolation contactor and down to the motor. So the first test we're gonna do is just shut off power, which we have right now. We're gonna check that it's off, and then we're gonna check uh, the resistance between phases on this uh, soft starter and see what's shorted and what isn't. Okay, first thing I just want to make sure there's no voltage present in here. That's good. Our control voltage is coming off of that disconnect as well, so that's all off. All right, let's just do basic continuity check phase to phase. That's all open. What up top? That's all open, that's good. Okay, here's a dead gecko here, but that's not, that's not enough to cause what we're dealing with. Just clean up his carcass. Good. Uh, yeah, so between phases, we've got nothing. Let's check these fuses. Good, good, good. Fuses are all good. Let's look down here at our motor. Now these windings should have some kind of resistance on them. I do have a dead short between one and two, and a dead short between two and three. That is very suspicious. It should be a few ohms, uh, but not zero ohms. That's not right. Yeah, it's zero ohms. Okay, so that makes me want to look closer. We'll go out to the motor head, di motor, or we'll go out to the wellhead disconnect switch and we'll do a meg test there and see what's going on down the hole. Doesn't look good if the problem is down the hole. All right, here's our wellhead disconnect switch. Well's right behind here. Uh, here's our phase conductors coming from the soft starter into the top of the switch, open jaws. So these three wires here are the motor windings. Uh, again, it was suspicious not seeing any resistance between them. I had dead short between them. I'm going to do a mega ohm test to earth though, to ground, right here at the disconnect switch. We'll do a thousand volts. Got to put it on the right probe setting. There we go. Thousand volts. That's good. 83, 100 mega ohm climbing. That's a good strong reading. Same here. Okay, greater than 100 million ohms. And line three. Very good. 
Okay, let's check the, the also line three is good. Let's check the uh, insulation resistance and see if it matches what I saw over there because there's a chance the problem is in these conductors. Because from the last test we took, the only change we made is we pulled these knives out. So let's just do a basic insulation test. See, that's much better, 0 0.26. 0.26, 0 0.26. Now let's close the switch. Still the same reading, interesting. 0 0.26, 0 0.26, 0 0.26. It could be that this is more sensitive and my Fluke 376 just shows that as zero. But 0 0.26 seems okay. Everything in here looks clean. Uh, yeah, interesting. Okay, let's keep looking around. Okay, so the motor megged out good. Um, the motor windings look good. I was getting zero ohms with my Fluke 376, but with my Megger, I was getting uh, 0 0.26, which seems like a better reading to me. Uh, let's just double check our supply voltage is good before we run it. Yeah, supply voltage is good. And then I'm gonna put this into the amp feature, like that. And then, uh, Put that into the amp feature like that, and then I'm gonna try and run it in hand and see if we can get anything happening here, what kind of amps it takes. I did check uh, resistance between each of the phases on the line and load side of the soft starter, and they're all wide open, which they should be. Uh, let's see what happens when we try and run it in hand. All right, here we go. salted on pulse F0903, which is that same thyristor fault. Interesting. Currently have power. Do have power. Don't we have power going to that contact flow? That should be 480 volts. Oh, because <laughs> I'm on amps. Okay, let's check voltage. Now that it's faulted. Okay, I got voltage coming in. Yeah, it is not happy. Um, I think we've got a bad soft starter, honestly. We're gonna have to look at replacing it ASAP. I forget what kind of horsepower we're dealing with here. It's not tiny. 100 horsepower. Yeah, it's a big boy. I do not want to run him across the line. That would be uh, violent, to say the least. Slamming a 100 horse across the line with a little starter here. Uh, but it seems like the motor is healthy from the windings. 
It just seems like the soft starter does not want to wake up and get off the bed. We've got good supply voltage. We've got uh, the controls are all working and there's just this in internal fault with the uh, soft starter. We checked the motor connections. We went through everything else the manual recommends. Okay, so reviewing that footage, there's no amperage happening when I call for it to suck in, uh, for it to start. So it's really pointing towards a problem in the soft starter. I'm not seeing any continuity between phases. Um, it's all open. So I don't believe there's that shorted phase in there. I don't know what is going wrong with it, but it's really pointing towards soft starter replacement being the solution. Another idea I want to try here is just running it with the wellhead disconnect open to see if the, the same fault happens or if it notices that there's no load connected. So we're going to try that now. And it basically shouldn't run or do anything. Let's see what it does. Same thing, shorted thyristor. All right, so with the soft starter failed, essentially, the options for this place is trucking in water to the top site, uh, which is expensive and inconvenient, but doable. Or this enclosure, as we went over in the beginning, has a bypass contactor with overload protection built in. The only issue is starting a pump across the line is very um, violent. Uh, it will go from zero to full speed almost instantly. The amount of inrush could be, you know, seven to ten times the running current. So 800, 900 amps. Uh, we may trip the main uh, possibly. And it's very violent on the mechanical side of things too. The pump, discharge piping, uh, it just completely is violent. I've presented these options to the operator and they're going to convene and let me know what they want to do. In the meantime, though, I've never run this one in bypass, so I don't know how it works or if we can run it in bypass automatically. So to test it out, I've opened up the wellhead disconnect switch, and then I've got the key for the bypass toggle switch. I want to see what it does when I switch it over, put it into bypass. Oh yeah, there it goes. Okay, so right now there's no current because I've got the disconnect open. But what bypass does, there's no, our, our handoff auto switch does nothing. You flip that key to bypass, this contactor sucks in and away she goes. Um, we'll still have protection from our little fuse motor saver, it looks like, and from our motor overload here. That's it. I need to find out how many amps this thing normally runs with, uh, if possible, and then um, set up that mechanical overload to protect it in case they decide to go on the bypass route. Basically, I'm not going to run a 100 horse motor across the line without clear express permission and a disclaimer of like, hey, I warned you that that is not ideal and could be violent and could damage your stuff. So once that's all official, then maybe we'll put it in bypass or let them do it themselves. All right, so speaking with the operator, they are still on the fence if they want to do bypass operation, but I'm making it very clear to them to relay to the customer the owners essentially that if it runs in bypass we and the operator are not liable for any damages that might occur uh, from the inrush and mechanically on the uh, infrastructure of the pump and all the discharge plumbing my advice to them is to tr uh, go into like water restrictions for the subdivision and immediately uh, start trucking in water and then if that fails to meet their demand then run it in bypass but that is a uh, last, last resort, I would say, is running it in bypass mode. I'd way rather protect the pump and motor and the investment in the pump and motor because that's a very expensive thing to replace deep underground. Um, protect that and just truck in the water while this gets, a new one of these gets air freighted in. So I got to get on my computer and uh, try and see if I can find one of these online and get an air freight price and get that price off to them ASAP. Otherwise, I, I think we found the problem. I'm fairly confident that it's just located within the soft starter. And uh, yeah, see if we can figure it out for them and get that thing replaced and get it back online.
All right. We'll see you when we come back or I'll see you on the next one.